I want to bring up something. Several years ago, somebody uh, contacted us here. On, actually, came on the show uh, by phone and saying they were concerned about this was the legalization of RU-46 because it was going to end the battle. Of course, obviously, it hasn't ended the battle. Mm -hmm. And that they believed that now, since it could be done by pills, all the doctors in the country would be doing RU-46 abortions. We'd never be able to stop right. it. Right. Now, a new study has come, up, come out from Reuters in New York that said that um, RU-46 has made almost no difference in the number of people who are willing to do abortions, that almost every RU486 abortion is being done by freestanding abortion clinics that were already doing mechanical abortions, that it hasn't increased at all, which is good news. I mean, this is, this is I, I always felt like this would happen because there's a stigma to abortion and it doesn't change just because you change the method that you do it. Yeah. And it, it's like if you, if you had two people on trial for murdering their wives and one guy hacked his up with a hatchet and another guy poisoned his, you're not going to say that because the second guy poisoned his and it was less gruesome looking, that therefore it's not a murder. Mm -hmm. It's still the same thing mm -hmm. with RU-46. And correct me if I'm wrong, almost all RU-46 uh, takers have to then go in and have a mechanical abortion after that. You're wrong. Am well, I wrong? Here, there's a certain number of them will. Number. Here's, here's what we're fail, finding. But very, that's a very relatively small percentage. You know we're working on this special project, and I can't talk a lot about it right now, but one thing that we're finding is that these standalone abortion clinics uh, that are dispensing RE46 either have to be very close to or already providing uh, a, a surgical abortion right. because it fails. And, and if a woman fails to deliver uh, a, a dead baby through the RE46, there's serious complications, not the least of which is sepsis and, and death. It can be, right. And so it, they have to have an abortion afterwards. Uh, so it's... Oh, totally. so they just can't hand them out in the middle yeah. of the country and and just and have no uh, backup plan. But we, but we can't be but we can't be saying that it happens eighty percent of the time or even uh, half time. It, it it happens rarely, but it does happen that that the RU forty six abortion doesn't take. And part of the reason is because the abortion lobby is violating the protocol from the manufacturer of the drug that says you oh. can't give it after seven weeks. Let They're doing you. them nine weeks, ten weeks. Oh no, there's off label use, and this is part of that. Right. I, I think this is part of the legislation in. Uh, Oklahoma is you can't give RU46 an off-label use, and what that means. This is how little Kristen Gilbert died up in uh, in Kansas. They did a late-term abortion, and then as kind of a backup to help expel any uh, leftover fetal parts in the uterus, is they give RU46. And if you if if that is compounded, the problems are compounded if there's a perforation of the uterus like what she right. had, and so it develops this extreme sepsis. Uh, so yeah, they're they're not using it in accordance with the way it was intended to be right. used. Yeah, exactly. And um, so that's one of the reasons that you see they're giving it to a girl when the manufacturer of the drug says, "Don't give it after seven weeks, sixty-three days is what they're saying, or no, whatever, whatever it is. Uh, after seven weeks, don't don't give this this uh, drug." Um, and they're giving it up to nine weeks, and now we've heard some rumors up to ten weeks. Um, well, even in the second, third trimester. As a as a, a adjunct to right. to the abortion.